Hey everyone, this is Anna and thanks so much for visiting my channel. I had some interest recently to show how I make my tea egg tags. These tags were the, the uh, specific ones that were asked about, so I thought I would share that detail with you today. Um, these tags have been tea dyed in um, an instant tea. You can use regular tea, I just prefer instant tea because I get a little bit more bang for my buck um, in regards to the tea itself. Um, and uh, I just really like the color that these this particular tea uh, produces. So here is an example of um, the two and a quarter inch um, tags that I make. Uh, here are some uh, Manila um, tags that I've tea dyed, and uh, I use the same process. So I'll go. I'll show you what that process is, but I just want to give you some examples here. Um, so sometimes you can get just a really nice subtle effect with it, or you can get a more of a modeled. Um, you know, speckly um, look to it too. That's another reason I like the instant tea because I can kind of control, um, you know, getting some more of these uh, darker textures um, on the tags. And then here's an example of some larger tags. Um, here's an old rubber band holding them together. Um, but these tags um, were dyed the same way and uh, have just a really nice, rich, um, tea dye color in them. So I really love, I really love um, how these all turn out. Um, here are some darker tags that I made. And these, I used the same tea, um, but I just left them to bake in the oven a little bit longer. And so it darkened, um, it darkened where the tea had settled. So you can kind of control, um, the tea dye process that way as well with the heat that you use in the oven or the length of time. You do want to bake them on a really low temperature, but you can, um, if you leave them in longer, you can kind of control the darkness that it gets. Um, so that's those. And then I also have made um, these little tiny ones here. Um, these are a one inch tag. And when I buy them, they're already, they already come with the strings on them. So um, I just leave them on there because I like how the tea, um, antiques the string as well um, and here's a, just a couple examples of how I have used these in the past um, I just stamp little handmade um, things on them or I'll just sign my name on them um, I used to sell things at a little boutique and I would use these as my price tags so um, and then I also made ages ago these were some tags that um, I think it was making memories came out with um, and so they were not strung, pre-strung, but I just threw them in my tea solution and baked them up. And now these are some of my favorite ones to use. And here's a smaller square. So these were also from Making Memories, I believe. I think that's what it was from. I don't know. These are like 15 or more years old. And then here's some smaller circles. Um, this size is actually my favorite. It's a two inch in diameter. Um, so this size is actually my favorite. I only have three left. <laughs> and then I have this size as well, which is a uh, one and a half inch in diameter. And I also really like using these as well. And this is all I have left of these. So hopefully I'll be able to find some of these smaller tags. Um, but the ones I've been making most recently are these two and a quarter. The other thing I tea dye actually is seam binding. And um, I just buy it in a roll. Um, it looks like this when it's new and I just buy the white or off-white color I think this one's called almond maybe uh, it doesn't have a color name on it but it's an off-white cream color almond something like that and then um, when I tea dye it um, the the tea settles in the edges of the ribbon and then you know as the as the ribbon settles down and hangs lower onto the baking sheet um, the tea, where the tea touches the baking sheet you'll get some of these darker textures um, like this so and I just think it's really pretty um, and it stays you know somewhat soft it's not as soft as it is new but um, it's still really soft and fun to use so like here's a piece where that was crimped on the baking sheet so now it has that really nice um, stripe in there so anyway these are just some of the things that I tea dye let me go ahead and show you how, oh, here's one other thing I've tea dyed. Um, some old crochet thread um, that I picked up at a thrift store. Um, I thought I would give this a shot, so I just dunked it right in the tea solution. And I just let this one set to dry. And uh, 
it came out this really lovely, um, lightly tea dyed color. So I really like it. So let me go ahead and show you how this is done. All right, so to get started, these are the tags that I use. Um, they, I order them in bulk. They come in this big brown box. And they are the strong metal rim tags, two and a quarter from Avery. And there's 500 in a box. And there's the item number if you want it. Um, and I already have some that I've tea dyed in here. Um, but when they come new, uh, they come strung on these white threads, um, just like this. And uh, they're held together with, in little bundles with these little orange twist ties. And they're just plain white tags. Um, so this is how they come. And then um, as I tea dye them, when I do them in big batches, I just kind of put them back in this box. So actually here are some ones that I did in coffee. Um, and I'll show you the difference. Let's see. So there's a coffee dyed one. This is a tea dyed one. And you can see the difference in color. So coffee on the left and tea on the right. And so I prefer the look of the tea. Um, I like the coffee as well. It's just a little more subtle. Um, so if that's, you know, kind of the gray or browns that you're looking for, um, coffee would be what you would want to use. Um, I just kind of prefer the look of the tea myself. So um, they're what I make most often. So that's how the tags come. Um, so what I do then is, I'm not gonna do a whole bundle of them today, but usually what I would do is I would just grab the whole bundle and dunk it in a bowl um, of tea. I'm just gonna do a little handful here. Oh, well, they've got that twisted in there pretty good. Just pull those out. side. All right, so now that you've got your um, your little tags or anything that you want to tea dye really, um, I use um, this Nest Tea unsweetened iced tea mix. Um, I just have been raised on this iced tea and um, find that I just really like the color of it once it's done um, in the baking process, but I also drink it all summer long, so there you go. Um, it's also the tea that I use to make my Russian tea mix uh, in the wintertime. So anyway, <laughs> then um, I also use uh, boiled water. I boil my water since I don't have um, a purifier. I just uh, boil my water. And then when it's still warm, I do add a little bit of the tea. I need to get myself a spoon. So you just add a little bit of the tea mix. And the darker you make the tea, um, the darker your tags will turn out. So you can kind of experiment and see what you like. I'll add a little bit more. Okay. And then I have a dedicated cookie sheet uh, or baking sheet that I use um, for crafting. And it just bakes tea, tea dyed items, but um, just to keep things, um, you know, separate from things that we use for actual cooking. Um, I just use this one here and it doesn't look anything like my other baking sheets. So it's really easy to remember which one it is. <laughs> so then what I do while the water's still warm and remember I've boiled this, but now I've let it cool off um, a bit. So it's warm, but it's not hot by any means. Um, then I just dunk the tags in. And I make sure that there's tea in between each layer. And you can do this in a great big bowl. You can do it in like a, sometimes I do it in a uh, nine by 12 um, glass baking dish. So get those strings in there. And make sure everything gets nice and saturated. 
And you can let these sit in here for a while. Like when you when I do a nine by 12 baking dish, I have a lot of items in there. So the ones that get down, put down in first, um, you know, they're gonna be in that solution for quite some time. And it's okay, as long as you're using, um, you know, products that are like paper that has a little bit of substance to it, it'll be okay. Even newsprint, you can tea dye newsprint. You just gotta get it out of the tea solution pretty rapidly. So then once you've let them sit in there for a little bit, I just pull them out and you can wear gloves when you do this because it will stain, you'll get a uh, little tea dyed stained fingers. Um, so see, it doesn't look very different. But I don't, I don't necessarily like it when the string lays on top of the papers. Um, so I just set that aside and you can even like, you know, sploosh a little tea down on there. line them all up here so it does take time to do this because you kind of you want to do it fairly carefully at least I do anyways I like to control a little bit of my results so yeah, just sploosh a little bit on there and then um, how I get the darker speckles um, like on some of my tags like uh, this is I um, sprinkle in just a little bit stronger solution so um, you can even just sprinkle some of the tea right on the tags like that and this is kind of a fun thing just to kind of experiment with to see what you like and um, you know, maybe you like just the really light, light color that the tea by itself gives and you don't necessarily like the uh, heavier sprinkles in it. So you wouldn't necessarily have to do that part. So I think that looks good. And then if I was to do some seam binding, well, I guess I could just do some for you. I'll just do some seam binding here. So again, this is just the Snug Hug seam binding off a little bit of it and then you can dunk it in if you'd like um, or you can just lay it on the um, cooking sheet like this and then just kind of spoon it doesn't take very much tea to do the ribbon so um, sometimes I just dunk it in and squeeze it out and sometimes I do it this way it just depends yeah just like that and kind of scrunch it up And you can leave it um, in a little tight wad if you want to, if you want really crunchy ribbon. Um, I tend to like a little bit looser. Um, so I just kind of fiddle with it. And if I'm doing a great big batch of it, uh, it's a little bit easier because I can just spread it out over the whole cookie sheet and then uh, let it do its thing. Um, but now I'm gonna go put this in an oven and I'm gonna set my oven at 170 degrees. Um, that would be the lowest. You never really wanna go higher than like 200. Um, and I'm gonna bake it in the oven and I'll show you the process and let you know how long that takes. So they've been in the oven almost 40 minutes. I had to leave them in a little bit longer because of how much tea um, was on the seam binding, but it's completely dry now and it's still really soft, but you can see how it's kind of crinkly and has the tea dyed edges. It's really beautiful. And the tags themselves, uh, they were dry at about 30 minutes, um, but I did leave them in longer just because. And if you're not happy with the darkness that you got, you can actually add more tea and put them back in the oven and continue to bake them. So there you can see how the little speckles I added um, added that nice visual texture there. And the back sides always look nice too. Here's another one here. 
really cute. And they flatten, you know, mostly. They sometimes get a little bow in them if you have a lot of water or a lot of tea on them um, that you bake in. But for the most part, they stay relatively flat and I think they're really beautiful. So that's the tea dye process that I use. I hope this is helpful for you and I hope to see all kinds of new tea dye um, items on your projects that you share. So thanks so much for watching my video. I hope you found this very helpful and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!